Luke and Tom here with the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, and we're hiking, camping, and exploring every national park in Utah. And we're doing it in one trip. Our first national park on this trip is Zions National Park, which is hands down the most popular national park in Utah. All right, Tom, you ready to do this? Yeah. If you want to get into Zions National Park, you pretty much have to park at the entrance and take these shuttle buses throughout the park. But they're pretty big, pretty fast, and pretty regular. Our first stop in Zions National Park, me and Tom, we're going to hike the Narrows. There you go, you a little warmer? It's only 7 a.m. and it's still pretty cold out, so. Look at these canyon walls, that's so cool. That's the beginning of the Narrows, a slot canyon with a river running down the middle. That's where we go. That's not a bad one. Ooh, the water's brisk. When the sun comes out and the heat of the day is pounding down on you, this is one of the most refreshing hikes. But it's seven in the morning, so it's cold. There was a pretty serious flash flood last night and the river volume was about four times what it is right now. That's why the river's all chocolatey brown. See Tom, where it's ripply, that's where it's gonna be fast and shallow. Where it's calm, it's gonna be deep. Now there's two ways to hike the Narrows. You can either come from the bottom like we did, or you can come from the top. But if you come from the top and go downstream, you need to bring rappelling gear, you need to get a permit, and it's really technical and challenging. But this has to be one of the coolest hikes in Utah. Check it out guys, there's a patch of quicksand here. This is a pretty cool hike. In the summertime, this hike can get really crowded, but after the first quarter mile, probably about 75% of the people turn back. The further you go, the more you have the place to yourself. Careful, Tom. When you're wading through the water, you'll stub your toes on a lot of rocks. So you gotta have good closed toed shoes with a lot of cushion. First time I did this hike, I was wearing reef shoes. And by the end of the hike, both of my big toes were bloody. Thomas, it's Jabba the Rock. That rock looks like Jabba the Hutt. You think this is way cool? Yes. Like a million times better than that. I get so busy watching my step, I forget to look up. That's cool. This is a beautiful hike. <laughs> Suck it in. Yeah. This little side canyon looks cool. You want to go for a swim? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how deep that is, but it's definitely over Tommy's head. We'd have to swim over there to get to it. It's still not that warm right now. I'm not sure we want to do that. Oh, oh, oh. You have a little slip and fall there? Poor Tom, he just gets done saying he doesn't want to get wet. And then he fell in. <laughs> Check out that big pile of rocks up there. You can see how deep it gets when it floods. The water level changes so quickly. The water was up to here about 1 a.m. last night. Well, me and Tommy have been doing this hike for about three hours, but I think it's time to turn around. We've got so much we want to see. Has this been one of your favorite hikes? Yes, I want to come back.
Did you name your walking stick? Yes, Nathan. What? Nathan the walking stick? <laughs> oh, there's Nathan. Save me, Nathan! Save me! The water level's gone down about that much since we got here. Now that it's almost the middle of the day and it's closer to the trailhead, you're getting a better feel for how crowded this trail can get. It's time to set him free. How far do you want to go? I will remember you. Oh my gosh. Boom. Yeah. Come on, Chubby, out of the way. Good job, Tom. There's two of them. Yeah. Oh. Careful, Tommy. They like to eat nuts. <laughs> Oh, we just got out of the canyon and that sun is intense. Well, listen, would you like to go get some food and go see a ghost town? Yes. Apparently I forgot to pack knives, so I'm going to use a wheat then. Here you go, Tom. Siki me gusta chicharrones. We're only about five minutes outside the front gate for Zions National Park, and we're at the ghost town of Grafton. It's one of the best preserved ghost towns in the state of Utah. What'd you find, Tom? Prickly pear. Oh yeah, you can eat those, huh? Oh, yeah. That's good, Ashley. It's kind of like a pomegranate where it's got all these little seeds with flesh around them, but it tastes a little bit like a tart raspberry. The spines on the prickly pear are really fine. They're like little hairs. They're really hard to see and they get you. Oh, look at that. They take a big barrel, they fill it full of water, and then they hold it with a sled so they can do their laundry. Check out these mud bricks. This staircase is moving a little bit. This is the church in the schoolhouse, which was built in 1886. I believe this is where they filmed part of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Wants to get involved. Well, we are involved, really. Don't you know that? Imagine going to school in there. Whoa. I don't think this was built for somebody my height. There's always a reason. <laughs> hey, bud. It says Joseph Berry, born 1843 killed by Indians, 1866. In the end, that's what made Grafton a ghost town. The Navajo started raiding here and everyone just left and went to a nearby town for protection. Now some of the local community members have got together and are trying to preserve Grafton. So this is all private. This isn't a park or a museum. This is just a community trying to preserve history. Should we go check out another national park? Here at Bryce Canyon National Park, and we use my annual park membership. Hi. Uh, would you like a map? Oh, yes, please. You can pay either twenty to thirty-five dollars to get into a national park, or you can pay eighty bucks to get an annual pass for unlimited entries. You ready to see Bryce Canyon? Um, yes. Let me show you why we're here. This is Bryce Canyon. Isn't that cool? Do you know what those pokey things are called? What? Hoodoo's. Oh. Oh, boy. So, Dom, what do you think? Should we go hike down there? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, that's cool. Don't drop the GoPro. So, me and Tom are doing the Navajo Loop Trail. It's about 1.3 miles, and you go down a whole bunch, and then you come up a whole bunch. You know what this part of Bryce Canyon is called? What? The amphitheater. There we go, guys. That's the two bridges. Got two stone bridges, one up there and one down there. 
Oh. How are your feet feeling? Well, there's a whole network of trails down here in the bottom of the canyon and the Navajo Loop intersects a lot of them. So if we go that way, we've got the Queens Loop, which is about one and a half miles. We go down that way and we've got the Peekaboo Loop, or we can go that way and we can head back up the rim. Hey! <laughs> Did it, Tom? Was that hard work? Yes. My legs feel like applesauce. If you don't want to do a lot of hiking, Bryce Canyon is one of the most drivable national parks in Utah. You can see a lot from the road. Does that sound a lot better than hiking, Tom? Yes. Look at that. That's pretty. If you guys want to do this without the crowds, come here on a sunny winter day. It's absolutely gorgeous. Just one beautiful vista after another. You can just see them from. Do you know why you're cold? Because we're at 9,000 feet above sea level. We're high up in the mountains. It was boiling hot down in Zion's today. Hey, tell me, was that worth the drive? Yes. Tommy's done with hiking for today. He's, he's gummy. Oh. Well, let's go find something to eat, shall we? That is an enormous plate of rice pilaf. Is that your favorite? Yes. You're a rice pilaf fiend, Tom. There we go. Ain't pretty, yeah. but it's ice cream. <laughs> well guys, it's 9.30 and me and Tom are scrambling to go find a campsite. Of course, everything is jam-packed inside the national parks. So your best bet is often to go to the smaller state parks or the BLM land that surrounds the national park. So we're gonna drive about 30 minutes to a little state park See if we can't grab a campsite. I found a spot. We're about 30 minutes outside of Bryce Canyon at Kodachrome State Park, and there's probably 50 open campsites and maybe two campers in the whole campground. Much more privacy here. Nothing, the, the, safe on the table. All right, we got the tent set up. It's about 10.30. We need to get to bed. We're so tired. I slept pretty good last night, except for one little issue. I woke up in the middle of the night to my son unplugging my mat. I was having a dream. I'm <laughs> so sorry, Dad. What a great little campground. This is much prettier than the National Park campground, and there's about 300 less people. So I have some granola, some powdered milk, and some freeze-dried raspberry. I've got some ice from the cooler. You know, I bought granola because it's kind of traditional for camping, but I think Tommy made the better choice. All right guys, next stop, Capitol Reef National Park. And to get there, we have to drive through the Escalante Grand Staircase, which is one of the most beautiful national monuments in the country. stop here at the Sun Glow Motel and we're gonna get some pickle pie and some lunch. Oh man, look at this. 
Perfect. Peanut butter, chocolate, truffle, key lime. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. We're going to do one of everything. All right, Tom, you, you ready for this? I'm going to start here with the pinto bean pie. It reminds me of a zuki bean or an unko bean, if you ever had that. Like it? Pickle pie. Before. All right, do the pickle pie. Tastes a little bit like a pumpkin pie with a tangy zip on it. This tastes like pumpkin pie, so I'm okay with it. The oatmeal pie. That tastes like an oatmeal cookie in pie form. That's good. And buttermilk. It's like a lemon meringue pie without the lemon. Tom, you're in Utah. You gotta try a fry sauce. Yeah, the fry sauce. Yeah. Ketchup and mayo. Mm -hmm. Mixed together. I think there might be some mustard in there too. <laughs> yeah, they love their fry sauce here in Utah. Oh, I'm full, are you? We just entered Capitol Reef National Park. Capitol Reef National Park is the least crowded of all the national parks here in Utah. If you want to get away from the crowds, this is the park to go to. But even here, the campgrounds are crazy. Check it out, this is the campground here at Capitol Reef. Everyone's right on top of each other and there isn't a single space available. It's full. All the national park campgrounds in Utah are like this. Just go to the National Forest or the BLM or the state parks instead. And you'll find much better campground situations. All right, we're gonna take a drive on Scenic Road in Capitol Reef National Park. In my opinion, this is the prettiest drive in all the national parks in Utah. Check it out guys, we're driving through a wash. This road crosses a lot of dry riverbeds called washes. If we get a rainstorm, it's gonna be flooded. We're gonna have a hard time getting back. <laughs> Let's get our water shoes on. All right guys, me and Tommy are doing another hike. We're gonna hike to the Sulphur Creek Pools. It's a waterfall and swimming hole. It's only about one and a half miles round trip, but uh, it's 90 degrees out, so it is hot. The water feel good? Water feels nice. Watch out for cactuses. We kick one with these little dinky shoes and we're gonna be in pain. Check that out. That looks like a lava rock right there. Thousands of years ago, there was a lot of volcanic activity in Utah. There's lava tubes and extinct volcanoes and hot springs. There's an old lime kiln, Tom. Put limestone in there and you burn it up really hot and it turns into quick lime that you use to make mortar. Built by the old Mormon pioneers who settled this area. Oh, that feels nice. And then... Oh, feels amazing. I'll tell you, the hikes we've done so far on this trip were all awesome, but they were all really popular places. This, nobody. If you want to avoid the crowds, Capitol Reef is where to go. Look, there it is! Woo! Look at this, Tom! Yeah, I gotta do this. Oh, it's a little cold. It's a little bracing around the bits, but other than that, it's refreshing. Oh my gosh! Woo! Oh my gosh, I'm in the deep end. Okay, save me! <laughs> Whoa, I'm swimming. That's over my head now. Oh, oh no! <laughs> just... Okay, I'm holding on. Okay. Ah, uh, there I am. I'm back on the ground. I can do this one hand. Oh! Oh! No! Oh, no! 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 That's me! Here, you want to come with me and we go and we drift back down? Yeah! Huh. <laughs> go ahead! This feels nice, doesn't it? Oh, it's perfect temp. I am so tempted to climb up there and jump off into the deep end. But I tried doing that in Arkansas with Tommy last year and I cracked my tailbone so badly. 
took three months to heal. <laughs> this is pretty fun, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> you know, me and Tom, we saw hundreds of people on our last two hikes, but here at Capitol Reef, nothing. We haven't seen a single person on this entire hike. We have this entire place to ourselves. And we did just a small portion of a four mile hike along this river. So there's a lot more to see. Tom, I hate to say it, but I think it's time to go. <laughs> we got a lot of ground to cover. Oh, oh. <laughs> now it's cold, isn't it? What do you think, Tommy? Was that worth it? That was so worth it. One nice thing about this dry desert heat, we're going to be very dry by the time we get back to the car. Dad. Tommy's Tevas are giving him a blister, so we're gonna give him a little bit of assistance here. I don't want my hiking buddy wearing out before the trip's over. Here we go, this is the National Park Visitor Center and the beginning of the Sulphur Creek Trailhead. This is the Visitor Center parking lot. Such smaller crowds here in Capitol Reef. Oh, oh. There are loads of petroglyphs here in Utah, and petroglyphs are prehistoric paintings on the rock by the indigenous people. And up here you can see a bunch of them. You can see right there they've carved into the rock pictures of people and animals and other things. There's petroglyphs all along the edge of this cliff face. Archaeologists believe those were created between one to two thousand years ago. There's a boardwalk and a bunch more petroglyphs down that way, but we need to make tracks. All right Tommy, next stop Arches National Park. Alright guys, that's Arches National Park right there, but we're not going to camp there. We got to find a campsite just a little down the road. Look at this guys, this is one awesome campsite. We're right here on the banks of the Colorado River and we're maybe eight minutes from the entrance to Arches National Park. Yes. Oh. Oh, you gotta hold it under you. See that mark right there? Well, we are getting up early tomorrow morning to go hike arches, and so I'm getting everything ready, including taping up Tommy's feet a little bit so he doesn't get any blisters. Had a little spot on the back of his ankle that was feeling a little bit raw, so we put this blister prevention tape on there. Does that feel good? Yeah, it feels nice. All right, guys, it's late, but we're getting up before the crack of dawn. We've got a busy day tomorrow. I'll see you guys then. Hey, Tom, you ready to go hiking? Yes. It's 5.30 in the morning, and you can see the parking lot's already got about 20 cars in it. All right, guys, we're in Arches National Park, and we are doing the delicate arch hike. Doing good there? One time up. We all went up the mountain. Oh. Oh. Tom, what do you think of this this trail? Oh, beautiful. Welcome to Delicate Arch. Was that worth the hike? Yes. That was pretty awesome. But you can see it's a very popular hike. I mean, this is the crowd that got up at 5 a.m. to go do this. Me and Tom are just sitting here watching the sunrise on Delicate Arch and it is a beautiful, beautiful day. And best yet, it's not 90 degrees yet. <laughs> Feels a lot nicer than it did in the middle of the yesterday, didn't it? Fuck. Look at this. I think, is that cool? Yes. <laughs> Now you guys can see this is a beautiful hike and it's an icon of Utah, but there are tons of wonderful hikes just like this that aren't anywhere near as crowded. We got up at 5 a.m. and you can see there's probably 20, 30 people here already. And it's just gonna get hotter and busier as the day goes on.
Well, me and Tommy are gonna hustle down this trail because we got a lot to see here in Arches. You excited about that, Tom? Yep. It's easy to get lost on the slick rock part of this trail. So there's these little posts here every once in a while. You can see one there and one there. But if you come at night, it's really hard to see those and about half the people on the trail get lost and wander off. It doesn't even feel like falling. But if you want to avoid the crowds, come in the off season. If you come in the winter, it'll be a fraction of the people here. And you won't have to do the hike in 100 degree heat. Me and Tommy ate too many dried apricots last night and uh, he's uh, running for it. There's the bathroom. Oh, he's quick. All right, you still alive, Tommy? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh. All right, Tommy, you want to go check out some of the other arches? Yeah. We're going to do a quick walk up to Skyline Arch. And there's literally dozens of arches like this in Arches National Park. It's right in the name. And you'll find that a lot of these other arches are nowhere near as crowded as Delicate Arch. We're gonna go take a stroll in the Devil's Garden. This is the Devil's Garden Trail and it's about seven miles long and there's lots of little spurs and arches along the way. <laughs> He's like, hey guys. Oh, that sun's starting to come out in force. Oh, well, check it out, this is Pine Tree Arch. This is cool. This is a fun hike, and if you guys want to do this too, I'm going to put information about all the hikes we did in the video description for this video. This is the double arch trail in an area called the Windows. There's probably about a dozen arches right here in this little valley. Oh, I just looked at the clock. I better hurry. We've got to catch a helicopter. Hey, tell me, you want to go explore the national park without having to do any hiking? Yes. Say goodbye to Arches. Next stop, Canyonlands National Park. This is the Canyonlands Regional Airport, and we're gonna see Canyonlands National Park by air. Yeah, that's cool. Like, that's smaller than my I'm nervous. I've never. way above my head, but it sounds like it's about to chop your skull off. I guess we're Whoa. doing the bag. Okay, I can enjoy this. I drop us off. Tommy, was that awesome? Yes, it was. I'll tell you, that was a pretty awesome tour and it was a lot more affordable than comparable tours in other areas. If you ever wanted to do a helicopter flight seeing tour, this might be the place to do it. Hey Tom, should we go drive into Canyonlands and see it from the ground? Yes. Alright Tom, welcome to Canyonlands National Park! Woo! Canyonlands National Park is broken up into three sections. There's Island in the Sky in the north, 
the needles in the southeast, and the maze in the southwest. It looks like they got some scenic overlooks up ahead. We're gonna stop and check them out. One thing cool about Canyonlands is they have some amazing 4x4 trails down into the canyon. So we're going to go down the Schaefer Canyon Trail. Oh my goodness, this trail drops right off the side of the canyon wall. Look at that cliff. Oh, that drop off is no joke, Tommy. Oh. Oh. Hey Tom, is this scary? Yes, I'm ready to bail out. <laughs> you like this, Tommy? No. Yeah, if you don't like heights, this isn't the trail for you. I said Capitol Reef was the prettiest drive of all the national parks. This is the most entertaining. Bad news though, we gotta go back up. <laughs> that is an amazing drive. That was so cool. I can't believe we just drove down that. <laughs> but this trail system goes on for miles and miles just disappears off into the horizon and there's dozens of trails like this in Canyonlands. Unfortunately we're on a time crunch and we got to get headed back. All right Tom you ready? This is the Aztec Butte Trail. It's about two miles long. It takes about 45 minutes to hike and it leads to some old Indian structures and archeological sites. Got some rock piles here marking the trail. Just keep following those. There's another one. Trail kind of dead ends here. Got to follow the rock piles now. Now these are the pantries. This is where they would store their food and medicine and seeds and stuff. So apparently the Native Americans would live here seasonally and when they were away they would store all their valuables, their food, their medicine, their seeds in these little rock pantries. They could seal them up and keep everything in sealed up pottery. The animals couldn't get it and the weather couldn't get it and when they came back it'd be ready for them. It's rocks and mud with sticks across the top. Yeah you got quite a bit of room in there. This would be a nice little shelter if you needed to get out of the sun. I think it was another one of their pantries. And look, you can see a big pile of rocks right here too. Doing good, Tom. Oh, that feels so nice. Yeah. I gotta put that off. Oh, that feels better, doesn't it, Tom? Oh. It's a great wall and all, but I wonder what they use on their roofs. <sighs> Look down here, there's another pantry right here in the cliff face. Oh, you can see there's a whole bunch all along here. Oh, look at this. Yum. What do you think? Is this pretty cool, Tom? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, those are definitely big enough to be houses. And not they are houses. This is like the bedroom. No, yeah, see this? Yeah, this is one house. Oh, yeah. 
That's a heck of a view right there. I understand why they lived here. This is nice and cool. And I bet when you build fire in the wintertime, it's nice and warm. This was so much cooler than I anticipated. I am so glad we came up here. And if you guys want to do this too, check out the video description below for more information on these hikes. Ooh. Save me! <laughs> Was this an amazing trip? Yes. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed filming it. If you want to see more videos from the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, make sure to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. And check out our travel adventure playlist and our camping adventure playlist. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button so you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.